and we acknowledge and accept that Bishop Designate Clifford Thomas Alford be consecrated bishop in the Lord's Church, humbly submitted by the officers and members of the New Zion Baptist Church of Lufkin, Texas, Incorporated, located in the city of Lufkin, the state of Texas. This is what the word reads. We, the officers, members, and affiliate churches of Breath of Life United Fellowship of Churches Incorporated, do hereby declare and announce that Bishop Designate Clifford Thomas Alford has exemplified the characteristics of a good leader. He has shown a desire to unite community churches as one body in Christ. We furthermore declare that Bishop Designate Alford has invested his time in seeing that we as a body of believers return our churches to a place filled with sweet fellowship, peaceful unity, mutual caregiving, and spiritual growth. He has a vision for love and fellowship, support and encouragement to help the growth of our area churches and neighboring communities. We, further, we moreover declare as an assembly of believers that Bishop Designate Alford does not waver in reaching out to people from all kinds of backgrounds and cultures to come to know Christ as their Savior. Let it be known on this day, Saturday, August 22nd, in the year of our Lord, 2015, that we acknowledge and accept that Bishop Designate Clifford Thomas Alford be consecrated as Bishop in the Lord's Church, humbly submitted by the officers, members, and affiliate churches of Breath of Life, United Fellowship of Churches Incorporated, located in the city of Lufkin, state of Texas. Yes, yes, it is our wish. wish. Will you uphold him as bishop? Yes, yes we will. My brother, you have been chosen by the Lord. Remember that you have been chosen from among men and appointed to act for men and women in relation to God. The title of bishop is not one of honor, but a function. And therefore, a bishop must strive to serve rather than rule. Such is the counsel of the Lord. The greater should behave as if he was the least, and the leader as if he were the one who served. Proclaim the message, whether it has become welcome or unwelcome. Correct error and unfailing patience and teaching. Pray and often sacrifice for the people committed to your care. 
be a faithful overseer and a guardian. Since you are chosen by the Father to rule over his family, always be mindful of the Good Shepherd who knows his sheep and is known by them, and who did not hesitate to lay down his life for them. Of all those who God placed in your care, love those who share in the ministry of Christ, love the poor and infirm strangers and the homeless, Encourage the faithful to walk with you in your apostolic task. Listen willingly to what they have to say. Never relax your concern for those who do not yet belong to the one fold of Christ. They too are committed to you in the Lord. You should therefore have a constant concern for all churches and gladly come to the aid and support of the churches in need. This you should do in the name of the Father, and in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, who gave us to the church of Christ, and support our weaknesses with his strength. Bishop, doesn't it, Clifford Offman? Are you persuaded in your heart that you are divinely equipped to do the will of our Lord Jesus in this designated office?
Would you accept this call and fulfill his trust in obedience to Christ? Will you be faithful in prayer and in the study of the Holy Scripture that you may have the mind of Christ? Will you boldly proclaim and interpret the gospel of Christ, enlightening the mind and stirring up the conscience of the people? Will you guard the faith, the unity, and the discipline of the church? I will, for the sake of the Father who has spoken. Will you be merciful to all and show compassion to the poor and strangers and defend those who have no helper? I will, for the sake of the Father who has spoken. Are you resolved as a good shepherd to seek out the sheep who may stray and to gather them into the fold of the Lord? I am. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Father, in the name of Jesus, Spirit of the living God, we call upon you right now, God, to anoint this oil as it is poured upon the head of your manservant, as it ran down the beards of the prophets and the priests and every prince in the Lord's church. We ask you now, God, to anoint it, that as this man begins to do the work of the bishop, he will remember that you were with him and that you are with him. Even in this, we thank you now and we give you praise. Amen. Holy Spirit, fill your servant, Clifford Thomas Ofer, who we have consecrated in the name of Jesus Christ to the office bishop in your church pour into him your priestly spirit grace and power as you bestowed upon him your beloved son Jesus Christ that he may lead those committed to change in proclaiming the gospel of salvation that through him renew this ministry Increase your church and unite its members in a holy fellowship of truth and love. And Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, as you anointed David, as the prophet filled his own with oil, and you anointed 
David, your word said, and the anointed abided with David from that hour forth. In the name of Jesus, promise us today that you won't ever leave us. Promise us today that you won't ever forsake us because the road is rough and the going gets tough and the hills get hard to climb and we need your presence. We need your help and you told us you would be a very present help in the time of trouble that we should not fear though the earth be removed Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, your word said that God is our refuge in the time of trouble. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we come against sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer our brother's soul. Satan, the Lord rebuke you and the blood of Jesus is is against you right now. And no weapon that is formed against you is going to prosper. For God said you belong to him and no man shall pluck you out of his hand. We ask these blessings to be upon his servant in Jesus name. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, world without end. In Jesus name. that rise against you. I decree and declare that it won't prosper, that it won't enter. Even the fiery darts of the adversary should not penetrate. Hallelujah. For the shield of the Lord is assured, and he dispatches angels that are camped around you to protect you and to keep you. So we bless you today. On this 22nd day of August, in 2015 of our Lord, Bishop, often, we consecrate you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. In Jesus' name.
and for the work of a bishop in the church of God. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, keep watch over the flock in which the Holy Spirit has appointed you to shepherd. Remember to stir up the grace of God which is within you. For God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of a sign mouth. Bishop in the Lord's church this day. Somebody give the Lord some praise in this house. The Cassid. This garment has been worn by many ordained clergy as a symbol of a servant. The garment reaches from the shoulder to the ankles. The feet are exposed to remind him that though he is forgiven, he must give an account of his walk with God. The Cassid is closed with buttons along the length of the front and worn with the familiar white clergy collar around the neck. The color of the Cassid indicates the position of the wearer. The Cassid. The cincher. This garment is worn with the cassette and girded around the waist, serving as a garment of humility. It is fitting symbol of the yoke of Christ, the yoke of service. It also speaks of the bishop's willingness to wash his brethren's feet, pursuant to the example of our Lord, the cincher. A 
white ankle length surplice outer garment. Its large puffy sleeves are gathered at the wrist by cuffs, a garment symbolic of the priesthood, the rachet. The shamir, a sleeveless ankle length vest worn over the rachet. This garment is the symbol of the prophet or preacher, the chief defender of the faith. The shamir symbolizes the bishop's role as one who is sent to travel the world to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. The shamir. Tippet, a long black scarf that resembles a stole is worn around the neck, hangs over the shoulders and down the front of the bishop as a sign of being yoked. The tippet is also has an emblem of the Reformation, the tippet. cross and cord. The cross was originally a means of protection for the bishop when he faced the people. It proclaims his office as a successor to the apostles. Today it is a reminder to everyone of the power which resides in the cross and is magnified by the gems it contains. When hung around the bishop's neck, it becomes a symbol of his imprisonment for Christ. The cord has entwined red and gold threads symbolizing the presiding prelate office the pectoral cross and cord. The zucchetto. It is a small headdress skull cap worn by the bishop, traditionally to cover the area of the shaven head during ceremonies. The color of the zucchetto symbolizes, the ca symbolizes it varies and with the cassette according to its position of the wearer, the zucchetto. The beretta will not be put on bishop. The beretta is a stiff, square shaped hat with silk trim and tuft. It has three or four corners across the crown, normally worn during processions and when seated, the beretta. The ring, the ring is fashioned in gold with an inlaid amethyst stone. The stone represents the marriage between Christ and the church and symbol of faith and fidelity. When worn on the right hand, it reminds us that Christ sits at the right hand of the Father and our focus should be on the kingdom of heaven, the reign. The cope, this long ceremonial semi-circular mantle or cloak opens in the front and fastens at the breast with a band or clasp and has a hood in the back. It may be richly adorned or ornamented. The shape is derived from the outdoor overcoat worn in the Roman Empire. The color may vary with the position of the wearer, the cope. The mitre. The mitre is usually white, gold, or red, and sometimes beautifully embroidered. The two tails, called lappets, fall from the back as streamers, symbolic of the everlasting living waters that Christ offers to the believer. The shape of the mitre is made to represent the clothing tongues of fire that rested on the heads of the disciples 
gathered in the upper room on the day of Pentecost when God sent the Holy Spirit to the church, the tepid, I'm sorry, the minor, the crozer. The shepherd's staff refers to